I'm the Commissar, this is Forged Alliance Forever, and you have nothing to fear but fear itself, and the enemy army, and a potential air snipe, and did you remember to scout for a nuke? Actually you have quite a lot to fear. Anyway, today we have these four feisty fellows fighting it out on the map Distortion in 2v2 ladder action. Now, before we get into it, Today I have put up a little poll. What day of the week would you like me to see me release my regular casts? Please vote and the winner will be the day on which my regular cast goes out. Anyway, let's go in and meet the teams. Hot team in the north, cold team in the south. Going first for hot team, we have Atakir, 1327 rated, Seraphim in Burgundy. In front of him, Dyson V12 Vacuum, a man who's very clear about what cleaning products he likes. He's also Seraphim, 1317 rated in red. In the rearguard position for Cold Team, we have their highest rated player in the game by some way. This is Conorak. He's 1694 rated. He's playing Cybron in dark blue. And last but not least for our intros, we have Astrox. He is 1033 rated in the forward position for Cold Team and he is playing Eon in baby blue. Now it may not be obvious from the board but it is obvious from the minimap this is all actually water dyson has said navy equals win question mark and he may not be wrong because pretty much every mech apart from this little cluster in the middle could be taken out by destros or in the case of seraphim or uef cruisers so conorak has access to walking destros but as seraphim both of Hot Team have access to missile cruisers, so that could indeed be crucial. And as well as the reclaim, which is scattered around everywhere, we have these little cities on the side islands, which could be worth picking up. Now, the first thing I'm seeing is that Cold Team are being a lot greedier with sending NGs out than Hot Team are, who have barely even finished putting dudes in their main base. And as a result, Cold Team have an early eco lead. They were there three to two eco ahead for a brief moment there, which this early could be very significant. Now, Astrox has gone for first round, second round, and then a few airs by the looks of things. Is he really going that heavy into air? That feels like it might be a misclick. First round, second air for Conorak. First round, second air, and we've got an early bomber in the queue here for Dyson. And first round, second air, and also an early bomber for Astrox. So bomber play all round here, that could be fun to see. No, he is going all there. Okay, cool beans. We'll see how it turns out. And that first bomber is out from Dyson, and I reckon it's going to try and pick up some kills down here. This NG has managed to complete its mechs, but hasn't finished the Hydro yet. And the bomber comes in. and doesn't drop anything. Okay, that is not what I was expecting. But it's immediately wheeled round by Dyson and brought back. And down goes the NG. Now we see that Dyson has ordered it over here, expecting he'll find an expanding NG on these mixes, but Connor isn't there yet. Meanwhile, this early bomber out from Atakir really needs to get going to join its friend who's already arrived and boom, its friend takes out one NG and damages three mexes, which is pretty nice, tries a hover bomb, manages to 
damage a mechs in the factory, but that didn't get so much done. And, oh, looks like those air factories were a mistake, because these two are now both replaced by land factories. And the bomber is shot down, though it does pick off another engineer before it dies. Meanwhile, a drop has come out from Connor. He's landed his engines here. But that bomber that we saw earlier from Dyson is just shredding them. He's denied one of the mechs. Both the engines are dead. He could come and pick this one up unless these inties from Connor get him, which they do. Meanwhile, where did that transport go? Now, this still has two labs on board, so it's a sort of baby ghetto gunship. And he's patrolling around with it looking for engineers. Unfortunately, all he'll find is Dyson's comm. And I don't know if he's got enough firepower on that ghetto to do any significant damage to a comm. But he's nonetheless coming back and he's going to give it a go. Meanwhile, though, on the left, Atakir's bombers come in for those damaged P gens. Boom! Four P gens and mechs, and they head on for Conorak. Meanwhile, that ghetto is on its way towards Dyson's main base. Nice hit on a cluster of P gens down there. It just lands the dudes though, and they're just. Okay, they just die. Never mind then. Back to Atakir's bomber. Boom! That's painful. What's it done to Conorak's power? Well, he's actually managing pretty well. I'm, I'm impressed. He's on the breadline, but he's managing. And his inti shoot down the bomber. Word escaped me for a moment there. Up here, we have spam from Asperox trying to deny Atakir his mixes, the comms here. It'll be enough to hold that off. But for how long? Because look at this, we have one, two, three, four land factories and a couple of half-built air factories for some reason going up. But those land factories will be enough spam to threaten that comm unless we see some actual land power coming out from Atakir up here. Meanwhile on this side, Dyson has started the gun upgrade and paused it. And look at that, he is power stored quite hard, and if he weren't mass stored, would be power stored even harder. Looks like he's just about bringing it under control, but he's got to work on that. Spam engagement in the middle between Dyson and Astrox. But that'll help out Atakir, because it means that any spam directed to help Dyson isn't coming up here to attack Atakir. Meanwhile, look at the assistance on this naval yard. Dyson has got a frigate out, and it's down here. It's taken out some engines and mixes here, and it's patrolling around, and there's more of a navy coming down to help it out. Meanwhile, though, up here, we have Astrox coming along, pushing in on Atakir. He could be vulnerable there, as Astrox does have more spam. But he's not bringing it in yet, and the comms and the spam seem to be in separate fights. So here are the two fights going down on the left-hand side. On the right, Connor has brought his comm in, and is getting good work done against Dyson's spam. But he's naked, and Dyson is about to finish that gun upgrade. And when he does, that could swing matters a lot, but I will be saving this spam until my gun upgrade is finished, and then pushing in with the whole thing. Meanwhile, on this side, the comms are just taking tiny little pot shots at each other. Ah, this could change matters though. Astrox is bringing the spam. No, he's not. He's sending it back. And Atakir brings those bombers into play. On this side, ooh, this could be painful for Connor. He's down into the yellow as Dyson's gun comes fires upon him. Dyson's spam, however, is dead. And Connor has the spam upgrade, Dyson's backing up, Connor is going to survive. Astrox, however, has brought his comm around on this side and he's got a lot of spam and he's pushing in with a unified force against the spam from Atakir. Well, Atakir's comm is out of position all the way over here and this could be painful for Atakir. On this side, Dyson's brought his comm forward and 
with Connor's com having fallen back, it's more than a match for the spam. Dyson kills two factories, but he doesn't overextend. He falls back. That's nice. Before we go back to looking at that fight up in the north, Connor is now contesting Navy, but Dyson is most of the way to T2. Meanwhile, Astrox tries to charge in on the production for Atakir. Atakir is sort of producing enough, but this is nice. Look at Astrox's units just come smashing sideways into Dyson's unprotected flank. And Astrox falling back. He's now falling back here, but he's got some good eco damage. He's taken these mexes out. So that's pretty nice. Code team is now 30 eco ahead, which is pretty huge. Meanwhile, raid from Connor taking out eco from Dyson here, which will just reinforce their mass raid. And Connor tries a naval raid, but there's a lot more in the way of frigates, but no subs. So these subs are free to just go to town on the frigates until this finishes and I'm certain that Dyson is not going to want to cancel that Destro. He might send the engines to build a T1 torpedo launcher here in order to counter the subs if he's feeling clever or he may just want to focus on getting the Destro out. Meanwhile, bombers out from Attic here. But Connor is raiding up on the left with bombers and jets, and he's taken out some mexes, so that's quite nice. Meanwhile, cheeky expansion here from Astrox is shut down by Atakir. Now, Dyson is advancing pretty courageously on this side. He is all alone. Sure, he's got gun, but there's spam here from Astrox, which... Well, oops, wrong guy. Which he doesn't know about. Oh, he gets a tiny radar ping there, but he does not know that there's this spam here and this spam here which could sandwich his comm. Meanwhile though, out comes his Destro and those subs are gonna be toast. Astrox retreats his spam here. I think that's a pity. I think that with Connor who now has gun, but with his spam here and Astrox here could have sandwiched and killed Dyson right there. But Astrox is falling it back over here and he's building up what is actually a huge force. Maybe he's going to push in on Attic here. Connor, though, is advancing. Dyson just trying to grab a little bit of reclaim. And the comms engage. Dyson is bringing in spam of his own. And Astrox sends in his spam back to help. If that were there earlier, this could have been... He could have been almost dead already. However, Destro... Um, Destro Dyson is retreating with his comm as Connor brings in a gunship. So Connor's got up to T to air. And his spam is just going to die here. There's no question of that. Inti's come in to handle the gunship as Dyson falls back. And Connor and Astrox push in. Quick check down south to note that Destro is raiding down here. Connor does now have T2 Navy and he's got gunships which will counter the Destro. But he's nowhere near having a Destro actually out. Back up to the north as Connor pushes in with his spam and Astrox's and Dyson is forced to fall back further and he may start losing eco including this T2 Mex if Connor is able to get any further in. But Dyson's brought out another Destro and on this flat surface look how flat this is. That Destro can just pick off all the units here which is pretty nice. Also, bombers coming in from Attic here. 
I think that he has lost that T2 Met, but I think Dyson's going to hold, and worse. Oh, no, more gunships coming in, but there's a lot of Inties around here from Atikir, and those gunships aren't going to do much. With this Destro, which is now actually Connor, who might be in trouble. He falls back, but the bombers rain fire down on him. The Destro keeps shooting at him, and now Dyson is chasing him with the com. Look at this. He's down into the red. Is he going to escape? I don't think he is, and he turns round. He wants to see if he can damage it. Boom! Connor is out at just under 15 minutes. The highest rated player is our first expulsion. Astrox will inherit. Now, on the one hand, Astrox is lower rated than both his opponents, both of whom were alive, but thanks to that huge amount of eco damage, he has literally twice the eco of Hot Team combined, and he's got to put it into stuff and get it out there. Meanwhile, let's have a quick note down here. Three mexes were destroyed by the Destro from Dyson, but torpedo bombers and gunships were enough to see it off and now we have a counter push with a Destro and some T1 spam. However, there are now two Destros out from Dyson so I think he's going to be able to resist it reasonably easily and again Dyson is just pushing forward with his com. Sure he's got two vets, sure he's got the gun but he's under half health and this is pretty courageous. Does he know where Astrox com is? He does not, well, he's got a ping there saying the ACU is there, but he has remarkably little knowledge of what's actually going on here. Like, he has no idea there's a navy here. So, intel could be important. Whereas, what does Astrox know? Well, Astrox knows a bit more about what's here, but he doesn't know anything about what's up here. We have a naval fight going down here on the right, though. Astrox, though, has less in terms of destroyers, he's got more in terms of T1, but those two destroyers will probably do quite a bit of damage and Astrox is quite wisely falling back. However, we saw he had torp bombers earlier and there's not much anti-air in there since several Destros don't have any anti-air. And indeed he does, look at that, that wave of torp bombers could get some quite significant damage done against the Destros of Dyson. But Dyson has a cruiser out, and that cruiser will probably handle the torps unless they instantly target it, which they don't. They do take out a Destro, but that cruiser should be more than enough to counter. Over here on the other side, we have Ilshis out for Atakir, and Astrox is trying to put up T2 point defense. He's got one, and he's trying to creep but he's being held back by those Ilshis. If he brought in those Obsidians to guard against the Ilshis, he'd probably get that turret up. These bombers should be targeting the turret, not the com. But point defense works both ways, and as Astrox comes in with the ground units, the point defense fires back upon him. These Ilshis need to move, though, and defend over here. More of a being produced all the time though, and I think this will be a hold from Atakir, though Atakir's com could do worse than to come in back over here and get a gun upgrade. Dyson, meanwhile, is just mad ladding it straight into the territory belonging to, well, used to be Connor, obviously now Astrox. And there's a lot of reclaim to pick up here, and Astrox isn't really contesting it, but Astrox has now got T3 land production back here. And though he's only got T3 anti-air in here so far, if he can get... Oop, nope, we've got a Harby coming in, and if he can get that Harby in here and attacking Dyson, who doesn't have any land tech, then he could actually do some quite significant damage. Meanwhile, I see some naughty, naughty, walkie, walkie. Astrox has brought one of his Salems onto the land, and it is sauntering forward as if it didn't know that it was a boat. 
So the spam from Atakia comes around here and the Salem is just going to blast it apart. Albeit somewhat slowly. But while I've been blathering on about a Salem, we have Atakir actually under a bit, quite a threat here. Those obsidians are coming down on him and he was just still out. Boom! Atakir just stood here, basically doing nothing for a while, and a small obsidian raid, relatively, just came and popped him. That was either bold or foolhardy of Atakir, I'm not sure which. Either way, it's now back to 1v1 and Astrox still has that immense eco lead. Dyson sends a swarm of Oshis to try and take out Atakir, but there are now two Salems and Dyson is still forward and he's gonna be cut off if he's not careful as he comes under fire from both Salems. On the left, the Oshis are advancing on Astrox's position, but he's got point defense, he's got Harbies, and he's got his com. They're all gonna die, but on the right, Dyson is retreating from the Salems into Astrox's spam. Could this have been a bit of a mistake? He's shedding hit points. And while that's been going on, he's made a Zui drop. That naval factory HQ could be doomed. It's almost got a Desto out. Is it gonna make it? Meanwhile though, Dyson, deep into the yellow, out comes the Destro and the Zuis die. But so does the HQ, so but Dyson is into the red. Look at him shedding health as the Salems continue to bombard and he gets a crucial rank of veterancy. Crucial. He's now got 5,000 hit points to play with and he flees towards the water. I think he might make it out. He's back into the red but he's close to... And a Corsair Strike comes in. 1,400 hit points. 1,100. 1,000. 800 hit points and he dips into the water. That, my dudes, was closer than... Well, closer than I would have liked in his position for starters. Meanwhile, we have a push of obsidians coming into the production here. And sure, Oshis are coming out, but this is a big swarm of obsidians. And the production could be under threat. And the HQ is here, and this is the only land HQ that Dyson has. Because he wasn't really focusing on land tech earlier. And if he loses that, which he does, then there'll be no more Oshis coming off the blocks. And he's just going to lose all this production. This is brutal. Boom. And those Salems over here, they're still advancing. There's a destroyer waiting for them, but that's just going to die. But, while I was wittering on about all that, the navy from Dyson has come charging into the bay for Astrox, and this navy are just going out, and these Salems are... Salems? What are they called? Cruisers, that's the word. These cruisers are going to be able to inflict massive damage. Meanwhile, though, the naval yard is under threat. It's on half health, and... And look at this! Dyson has just popped out of the water, killed one, and he's, just, he's not even overcharging, he's just walking up to all. Oh, there's a nice overcharge. He takes a couple of hits, goes down into the red again, but boom, the Salems are taken out. That is beautiful. On, however, there are still obsidians charging in here, and they are getting damage done. Meanwhile, look at what these cruisers are doing. Factories are going out, power is going out, that shield is down. This could hurt. And why are these obsidians not advancing? They could be getting massive damage done. Although, of course, it could be that Astrox is about to have quite some power problems if any more of these missile land. He tries to send a Harbi out, but the Destros are waiting and just tear it apart. 
the obsidians come towards this production which as we mentioned is only T1 and a wave of bombers are sent in to defend and look at that those shields are down they're just taking the hits meanwhile though the RHQ is under fire the PGens are all dead the PGens here are dead there's another RHQ but that's under fire as well the obsidians are cleaned up by the bombers but not before Dyson has lost a lot of mass but look at that eco the power store for Astrox is brutal he's generating 700 that's there you go 22 percent he's spending five times as much as he's making that's insane and now he's also losing mexes to the cruisers while the destroyers just stop him advancing anywhere but he's got all of this territory and if he can rebuild up here like he must have tp production here for engines and stuff so he can build an NG and get some power up here if he's thinking about it. But he's also just going straight in there with a horde of Harbies. That said though, sure, as we've covered, Dyson only has T1, but Harbies without shields are actually pretty weak. And the T1 bombers are enough to deal out quite a bit of damage. And those Harbies are just being forced to retreat because they can't defend themselves. Oh, the pain, my dudes. The pain. And it swarms, but Astrox just doesn't have the power. Meanwhile, Dyson has his production back up and running and he'll be sending more round and now he's going for the same on the other side straight for frigates actually I was expecting straight for T2 but maybe he doesn't need it with the range that these crews have got look at this Conorak's old base entirely mashed flat just rubbish wreckage and Astrox's original base going the same way. Kill Mexes suggests Atakir from beyond the grave, and he's right, there were two T2 Mexes which could easily be missiled out. And now, Astrox has his power back, but he hasn't got the capacity to spend the mass, and on top of that, is Dyson's power suffering? Yes, it is. Dyson is himself in a power store. And that's managed to bring the Eco's level. That was insane. Now, I don't like this from Astrox. He's bringing back a bunch of units, but they're just going to trickle into the fire from the Discords and the Cruisers, and they're all going to die. So, this was a waste. Even these Harbies... Like, there's only two of them. Okay, there's four there, but there's only two here because they're trickling. And the destroyers range them, and the destroyers are just going to be able to kill them. Astrox needs to get out of here and redouble his efforts at rebuilding in the middle. And he falls back. So he's now got an HQ rebuilt up here. Because, of course, this can't produce T3 except for engineers until he's rebuilt the HQ that he lost back at his main base. Oops, sorry for that little bit of epileptic zooming. And out comes our first cruiser on this side, and this could be the death knell for Astrox on both sides. Dyson has T2 Navy, and Astrox doesn't have any Navy. And where not so long ago we were saying how Cold Team had double the eco of Hot Team, how the tables are turned and Dyson has twice Astrox's eco. Cruiser missiles bombard the base. Now Dyson doesn't actually have anything in actual defense here yet and a push with Harbies or sniper bots or artillery even, T3 mobile artillery would be nice parked here, could do some damage. But that looks to me like he's got a Destro under construction here. 
And if that comes out, that will be a nice defence against anything that Astrox might try and send to shut the naval yard down, while the cruisers, meanwhile, are positioning themselves round the outside to just bombard everything that they possibly can. Dyson's trying to set up on the coast here to reclaim this. Astrox sends in a bunch of T1 land. There is a PD here. And the PD is actually saving quite a bit of it, especially now there's two. These engines might survive and get a decent amount of reclaim until these harpies walk in. However, there's now a Destro in defense from Dyson. And the Destro might is going to be enough to see off those harpies. Meanwhile, the cruisers have taken out these mexes, and look at the eco now! Suddenly, it's 100 to 20. Dyson has a 5 times eco lead on Astrox, and it is surely now only a matter of time. Beautiful positioning with the Destro standing guard, and the cruisers all around the outside shooting. Engie's out for reclaim. This harpy is getting a bit of work done, but otherwise, Dyson is now just in an unstoppable position. Either NG's not able to do anything, because Astrox is so horrifically mass stored with that all his mechs is dead, that there's nothing he can really do about it. I wonder what Dyson's planning there with his comm. Astrox has put up a couple of TMLs and maybe he's planning to snipe the naval yard, which would be nice, but I think that's going to be too little too late. And meanwhile, Nothers have been massing for Dyson. Now, Nothers are the best units of the T2 fighter bombers for doing comm snipes, because they fire one single big bomb rather than a spray of bombs like the Janus like the Corsair or, since it was so horrifically nerfed, the Mercy. I know the Mercy isn't a fighter bomber but it fulfills the same role when it comes to air to ground. And now the cruiser fire is pouring down on Astrox fortification and in come the Nothers. Are they going for the com? No, they're going they're going for the power. Nice hit. Astrox tries dodging, but now this power is partially exposed. And down it goes too. This is brutal, and I think that Astrox is all over bar the singing. He's putting up flak, but look how slowly that flak's going up. Boom! And uh, while this is going on, the cruiser bombardment and Astrox is down and out. Astrox resigns. What a game, my dudes. Two to one, eco deficit. Losing map control, but in the end, it was Navy round the outside that won the day. Could Cold Team have changed that somehow? Could Astrox have managed a clever little air snipe on that naval yard and so taken away the main threat to his dominance? Tell me in the comments below. While you're down there, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and obey. I'm the Commissar, and I will see you next time.